To give you an idea, about a third of the cases we see as a neurology service in the veterinary hospital are cases with some sort of spinal cord injury. So it is very common, it's about probably 500 uh, dogs a year here in Bristol. Treating spinal injury has this two um, major steps. One is to treat the acute phase, so the, when the dog becomes paralysed. So it could be surgery for realigning the spine, it could be surgery to remove compression on the nerves. So that's one set of treatment. And the second set of, of treatment would be in the chronic phase for those animals who have not recovered. So they had a bad injury, remained paralysed. Uh, one of the treatment that has um, become potentially very useful is to use uh, cells from the nasal cavity from, from the nose um, and harvest them from the nose and transplant them in the spinal cord to help the cord um, to regenerate. The start of the process will be having a small biopsy from the nose, which is probably a very small fragment of tissue that we then process and put in a dish and the cells will start to expand. So there is a process of multiplication um, where the cells grow to reach the number we wish for transplantation. Our olfactory cell system or smell system um, lose its neurons all the time because they're exposed to air, dust, smoke and so on. So we lose neurons in the nose all the time, but they do regenerate and we do keep our sense of smell all the time. That doesn't disappear. And the reason for that is because new neurons form in the nose naturally um, and they link with the brain all the time. And to do this link, they need supporting cells. So olfactory cells are supporting cells, helping um, nerves to grow um, and make connection with the brain. So that's the, the natural history of what's happening in the smell system. But if you do take these cells out of their natural environment, put them in a damaged region of the brain or spinal cord, then they do carry on having this um, function of supporting nerve to regrow. And what we're trying to do is the spinal cord is really bridging the gap, the lesion gap that's been caused by the trauma. So we put the cells into the, into the lesion uh, and hopefully they will help the nerves to regenerate. You can see or you can detect uh, an effect of the, of the cells um, in the sense that you see a change in locomotion. So these dogs can walk better um, with the cells uh, and regain some control movement of their legs. Now it's not a magic treatment and, and obviously not 100% of the dogs who would get the cells get an improvement, but we had um, enough success to show scientifically that, that uh, this was valid uh, and about 25% of the cases we transplanted in that way um, had some, some visible changes with the naked eye on, on their gait uh, and, and legs movements. Using these cells, um, I should say, has been done in humans as well, um, but as a safety trials. So it's only a very limited number of people or patients. The, the way forward would be to try and improve how we deliver the cells into the spinal cord. Because it's one thing to inject them and show there's an effect. It's another thing to then go into a person and, and how do you actually deliver the cells so they survive and, and are, are uh, numerous in the lesion. So there's a problem with how do we deliver them. So of course when dogs get uh, paralysed they also lose um, control of their, of their bladders so, uh, and, and so they become incontinent, um, which is a, a, a big problem. And uh, one of the methods we, we've been testing uh, in dogs to solve this problem is to use what we call neuroprosthesis. There are small silicon implants we can place on the nerves below the lesions. If the lesion is in the middle of the back of the dog you can still exploit the spinal cord below the lesion that's there and it's usually fine and has survived. Um, it's a technique that's used in humans, it's been used for 30 years in humans. So it's not new, but, but it's one of the examples where something that is working in humans has, we've taken it from humans and then and implemented it in dogs. Um, so it's actually the, you know, the other way, it's a reverse translation, isn't it? So by putting neuroprosthesis, small implants on the nerves, you can, um, so you do a surgery for that, you can take control of the nerves that are remaining and, and that are going to the bladder. And it is very, it's very effective and you can then, um, with a remote, control these nerves in different ways. So, so you can empty the bladder regularly, which obviously prevents from having to do it manually, pressing on the tummy of the dog, which is a bit distressing for the owner, or um, putting catheter into the bladder, which creates infections a lot of the time. So neuroprosthesis is a good is a good way of exploiting the preserved part of the spinal cord.